You know, and in the interview, he says, I've never seen anything like that, only in TV and the movies. I've never seen it in real life. And he's holding her head down, and she's gurgling, and the bubbles are coming up. You caused that, right? And then Gary said, well, why you got to kill us? And then Gary said, shut up and stabbed him in the stomach. Um, Gary said, you know what? I loved your mama with my whole heart, and I lived to the death. He threw my brother against the toilet, and then my little brother said, please, Gary, don't kill us. We're too young to die. Lovetta Armstead was many things, an educator, a strong woman, and an exceptional mother for the three lights of her life, JT 12, Jarrett 9, and Jasmine 6. She was a 32-year-old school teacher residing in Dallas, Texas, and had a heart as big as her namesake state. Lovetta longed to complete her family unit and invited her longtime friend, Gary Green, to move in with her family and become a father to her children. Though Lovetta's heart was that of an angel and her offer came from a good place, she hardly knew that she had invited the devil into her sanctuary. In no time at all, Gary had unleashed his unique form of evil onto this innocent family of four. This is their story. Lovita had a zest for life, unmatched by any other that her spirit shone through her bright smile. Her beautiful soul was a reflection of the sun shining bright in the sky, and her infectious smile never failed to rub off on the people who met her, scattering their dark clouds like mist and hot air. Perhaps she had seen and sensed the darkness and despair which were a part of Gary's inner monologue and had wanted to give him a new lease on life. Green had been paroled in 2000 after 10 years in prison for aggravated robbery with a fatal weapon. He spent time in jail accused of failing to pay child support. And despite knowing his soiled history, Lovita had believed that he had goodness in his heart. She had been unaware as to what a high price she would have to pay to bring a little brightness and cheer where even angels dreaded to tread. Or perhaps she had been taken in by the facade Gary used to hide his sullen reality. Troubled life. Gary grew up amid violence and extreme instability. His current attorney, Michael Mola, wrote in a 2020 appeal that Green's parents and grandmother were mentally ill. His father violently hurt Green and his mother. During his childhood, Green's aunt was slayed. Another family member took his wife's life and committed self-demise. From an early age, Green talked about wanting to end himself, of having nothing to live for. According to Mola, at the time of the slaying, Green met the criteria for schizoaffective disorder, which causes breaks from reality. He had severe chronic depression, manic episodes, and personality disorders. Green talked nonsensically, heard demons, and believed vampires followed him. Love and marriage. A short period of courtship soon led to matrimony, and Levita, with the open-armed support of her children, welcomed Gary into her humble abode. Her children fell in love with this new addition to their tiny family and put this monster up on a pedestal where he certainly did not belong. Safety and Separation The chinks in this false knight's armor appeared soon with JT and Jared bearing the brunt of an unprovoked beating at their new father's hand with the belt he was holding in it. Each strike of that strap fell on Levita's heart, ripping the gossamer fabric from their budding love apart. Gary's latent tendencies for violence had emerged into shining revelation, and being the conscientious and devoted mother that she was, Lovita decided to protect her children by putting them first and asked Gary to shift out. Face of an angel, deeds of a monster. On September 21, 2009, Gary visited Lovita and Jasmine at her home. Family members say he had moved out, but told Armstead that his parole officer was going to check on him at the home on that day. He persuaded her to let him spend the day at the brick house, but it was just a ruse to get his foot inside the door. Soon, a huge argument broke out between the two. Sometime during the course of the argument, it took a violent turn. Gary tied Jasmine's hand and feet with a rope and dumped her onto her mother's bed. For the next hour, he proceeded to attack her mother, ultimately taking her life, while she played a helpless witness to her mother's passing from this world. Levita suffered grievous injuries at the hands of her protector turned tormentor and breathed her last in fear for her little girl. Once she had departed from this good earth, this monster turned his attention to the helpless child left under his care. But what she got from him was anything but tender care as he suffocated under a tub of full of water and Gary's brutal hands forced her head onto the tub floor. Once he had finished this dastardly deed, he turned his attention to the boys of the family by picking them up from church group. Both boys were surprised, not only by the fact that it was Gary picking them up, but also by the inane pleasantries he was trying to exchange with them. But the elder boy JT was decidedly disturbed, and it felt as if someone was walking over his grave. But it was when both boys had reached the sanctity of their home did they learn what hell awaited them across the threshold. 
and then Jerry said, well, why you gotta kill us? And then Gary said, shut up and stabbed him in the stomach. Um, Gary said, you know what? I love John Mama with my whole heart and I live to the death. He threw my brother against the toilet and then my little brother said, please Gary, don't kill us. We're too young to die. What proceeded next was Gary's attempt to snuff out the lives of both boys. For some reason, which probably had something to do with him, getting sick pleasure out of being witness to the boys' heartbreak when they saw the bodies of their mother and sister that he let them live. He drove off leaving two little boys, overwhelmed and unable to process what had been done to their lives and loved ones to pick up the pieces of their broken existence. Boys recovering today after being stabbed allegedly by a stepfather. Police say the boy's mother and his younger sister died in the attack. Dallas police tell us Gary Green was waiting here at this house for his wife. She'd recently filed for divorce. Both were stabbed to death last night at their home on Morning Springs Trail in Oak Cliff. Police say as soon as she walked into this house, she was attacked. And then so were her kids. The mind of a monster. When the police arrived, a site of unrestrained massacre welcomed them. The officers found Lovetta Armstead, 32, and six-year-old Jasmine Montgomery lifeless just before 9.30 p.m. Monday. Besides the lifeless and the living lifelessness inside the house, they also found two letters, one of them written by Lovita stating her intentions for divorce and the other written by Gary Green, pretty much a signed confession of what he was going to do on that day. The letter was a snapshot of Gary's intentions and a look into how his mind worked. As we delve into the mind of a monster, we find that little is needed to justify the extreme actions like the ones pursued by Gary. You know, in the interview, he says, I've never seen anything like that, only in TV and the movies. I've never seen it in real life. He's holding her head down, and she's gurgling, and the bubbles are coming up. You caused that, right? And then he's got to turn his head because he's horrified by what he's doing, but yet he's doing it. To him, each and every swing of his weapon had been asked for by his victims and he was a mere conduit for what was actually their will. He'd have them outside and the little girl would ride her bicycle and you know, he'd be out with them. Two boys were able to... Uh... But you couldn't tell the difference. You couldn't tell if they were or were not. Wait a minute, what happened? I just got a phone call. He was a very kind lady and she did not... You know, he was like a dad to them. Mr. Green out of killing them. Time to pay the piper. After Green left the house, he tried to overdose on prescription medication. He called his mother and she encouraged him to surrender. Green turned himself in at the Southeast Patrol substation at 2.15 a.m. on the same day and gave a videotaped confession. Green was taken to the Dallas County Jail where he was being held on one count of capital slaying with additional charges pending. His bond was set at $1 million. Further details regarding his violent past were revealed in the course of his trial. During the trial, it was revealed that Green had previously knived and strangled an ex-girlfriend. He had also physically hurt and strangled to the point of unconsciousness another ex-girlfriend. In addition to viewing petitioner's videotaped confession, the jury heard the testimony of Jarrett and Jerome Armstead. On October 30, 2009, a Dallas County grand jury indicted him on a single count for the slaying of Lovetta that he intentionally and knowingly caused the demise of Lovetta Armstead by fatally kniving her with a knife. During the same criminal transaction, he intentionally and knowingly caused the death of Jasmine Montgomery by asphyxia and drowning. On October 28, 2010, the jury returned its verdict, finding petitioner guilty of capital slaying as charged in the indictment. It found that Green represented a future threat of violence and sentenced him to the gallows on execution row. Without court intervention, Gary Green will be executed on March 7, 2023, but the years preceding his final execution have been filled with frenzied attempts by a team of lawyers submitting appeal after appeal in an effort to dodge the noose. Attorneys for the 41-year-old Green raised 46 points of error from his trial, including challenges to the sufficiency of the evidence against him, his confession, and jury selection in 2012. The court eventually rejected all of the claims. On June 15, 2012, Gary Green filed an application for state habeas corpus relief. On December 31, 2014, the state habeas trial court issued its findings of fact and conclusions of law and recommended state habeas corpus relief be denied. This was followed by another appeal for original petition for federal habeas corpus relief on June 13, 2016. In his first claim for federal habeas corpus relief, Gary argued he is not eligible for execution under the Supreme Court's holding in Atkins versus Virginia. 
He argued that evidence regarding his background presented at trial demonstrated that he suffered from deficits in adaptive behavior in the areas of academic skills and social and practical skills. He argued that evidence existed showing that his low intellectual functioning and deficits in adaptive skills, including social isolation, were apparent prior to his reaching age of 18. His lawyers presented the state habeas court with no clinical evaluation supporting his assertion of intellectual disability. None of the expert witnesses who testified before the state habeas court offered an opinion that Gary was intellectually disabled, had ever been diagnosed by a qualified mental health professional as intellectually disabled, or had ever been referred by school or prison officials for testing for intellectual disability. Even the licensed psychologist who had presented evidence at his court hearing did not describe him as intellectually disabled. The Final Countdown For the last 12 years, Gary has been on execution row in Texas. His lawyers are still adhering to the claim that as a child, Gary Green was allegedly misappropriated by his father. Gary also witnessed his father violently hurt his mother. He performed poorly in school and was constantly in the bottom 10% of his class. They are maintaining that Gary comes from a family with a history of mental illnesses. Throughout his life, Gary allegedly exhibited signs of paranoia and mental illness. He attempted self-hurt at least once and believed people were out to get him. He also claimed to hear demons and believed vampires were following him. In mid to late August 2009, Gary Green checked himself into a mental hospital. He was diagnosed with a major depressive disorder with psychotic features. He was prescribed medication and discharged. Two days later, Green was diagnosed with bipolar disorder by a separate doctor. They are running an entire campaign to convince the general public that Gary Green had been an equal victim as Lovita and her daughter by the circumstances of his life and a mental illness he had no control over. Only time will tell how long he will be able to dodge the long arm of the law, but what is coming to him is an inevitable end, with him leaving to meet his maker and finally paying for his filthy actions. That's all we have for you, folks. Join us next time.